Welcome to another episode of Random Gamer. In this show, we're going to look back at games on one of my favourite ever handhelds, the Sega Game Gear. Granted, it only lasted about 15 minutes before you needed to change the batteries, but it had some great games, so let's hope the fates pick some good ones. This time, I'm going to use a pair of dice to choose the games. As I only have 11 games, the two dice will be perfect. I've numbered the games from 2 to 12, and whatever the score, that's the game I'll play. First out is US Gold's extension of the Outrun franchise, Outrun Europa. Next it's classic footy action with sensible soccer. But first up, Virgin Games bring us Superman, the Man of Steel. There's nothing like starting a new show with a great game. And this is nothing like a great game. Written by Graft Gold in 1993 and released under the Virgin Games label, Superman the Man of Steel is your basic platform run, fly, jump and shoot 'em up. And is a perfect example of a lazy license that doesn't do its wonderful subject matter justice. Dull level design that includes the annoying invisible barrier Really poor collision detection and tedious combat are the only reward for persevering through a game that certainly won't be running down your batteries anytime soon. It's a pity though, as the graphics are quite nice, with Superman's cape blowing in the wind when hovering and straightening out when flying fast. And there's some quite nice music and functional sound too. Whilst not the worst game you could play, it just has nothing to hold your interest and within 10 minutes of turning it off, you'll no doubt have forgotten it ever existed. And that surely is one of the worst evaluations you could hope for. But what's even more disappointing though, is that 15 years on, we've still not seen a good video game interpretation of the daddy of all superheroes. Random Gamer Sensible soccer needs no introduction, but as I make the rules, I'm going to introduce it anyway. Developed by Sensible Software in 1992 for the ST and Amiga, Sensi set a new standard for football games. Its cartoony graphics and wacky sense of fun were completely at odds with all the other companies who were trying to recreate the beautiful game in simulation form. The Game Gear version is surprisingly jam-packed with options for game types, teams, formations and kits etc. And it's clear from the footage that the charm of its diminutive graphics has all been retained. For me though, the original big screen version of Sensi was great for a quick kickabout, but it didn't really hold my attention long enough for a full gaming session. And that's why the Game Gear Sensible Soccer really triumphs. Handhelds are designed for these quick blasts and to be put down as soon as something better comes along. So rather than feeling a little short changed, I came away with a newfound respect for the game and it's certainly a title I'll return to when I'm in need of a little sensey action but can't be asked setting up the Amiga. And for those of you not in the know, the music track you can hear is Goal Scoring Superstar Hero, a wonderful original recording by the late Richard Joseph that was included on all the CD versions of the game. With lyrics by Sensible Software boss John Hare and sung by Jackie Reed, the track is almost as famous as the game itself. Europa is unique in the Outrun franchise, as it's the only game in the series not to have started in the arcades. Originally planned as a spin-off shortly after the home conversions of the original, 
The game was actually put on hold for nearly two and a half years due to Sega's release of the arcade follow-up Turbo Outrun and its subsequent home releases. But to be honest, they needn't have waited, as apart from a few similarities in the game engine, it really isn't a true Outrun game at all. You do get to drive a Ferrari in the later levels, but as any fan will tell you, if you drive anything without a prancing horse on it, it ain't Outrun. But that doesn't mean to say the game is rubbish. Quite the opposite, to be honest. It's just that it feels much more like Chase HQ than Outrun. In Outrun Europa, you play Simeon Cutts, a secret agent who's delivering top secret military blueprints. But whilst he's having a quick bite to eat at the Wimpy at Watford Gap Services, his beloved Ferrari F40 is stolen by thieves who want to sell the blueprints to the highest bidder. But luckily for Simeon, he sees a motorbike with its keys in, so he grabs it and sets off in pursuit. To make matters worse though, now labelled a criminal, the cops are out to get you too. So off you go on a fast paced chase down the roads of southern England, trying to catch the criminals who are heading for Dover and a cross channel ferry. Once you get to the port, you find that the ferry's already left but an unattended jet ski gives you hope. Level 2 has you dashing across the channel, shooting at helicopters and avoiding other boats and obstacles. Once on the other side, it's now a sports car that you need to steal as you speed through France in pursuit of the elusive Ferrari. Later levels take you on a speedboat across the Med to Italy, and then we finally get to drive the Ferrari to Germany and the final rendezvous. With great graphics that are easily distinguishable as the European cities they're portraying, and varied gameplay as you switch vehicles and weapons with each new level, Outrun Europa is a superb game, and one that goes a long way to making up for the poor conversions of the original Outrun game. So of the three Game Gear titles that I've covered this time around, this is easily the best, and it's a shame that it was never converted back to the arcades. I've played the game on a number of systems, and whilst the Amiga is probably the best version to try, the Game Gear really holds its own, and comes away with the Weekend Gamer seal of approval. Five, staple self-destructive, five seconds. Four, five seconds, five seconds. Three. Three.